my name, Marion Burdett. September 7, 1931. And where were you born? Owensboro, Kentucky, Davis County. Do you have any On siblings? A On a farm? On a farm. Do you have any siblings? I have two brothers and two sisters, and one that passed away we birthed. birth. Yeah. Yeah. Very sorry to hear that. Um, so you mentioned that you were drafted. You were drafted? I into enlisted. The, you enlisted? I had an RA in front of my serial number, regular army. And U.S. was uh, drafted. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I mean, had, did you know what you were getting yourself into? Did you know you were going to Korea? I was stationed in Japan for a year and a half before the war started in Korea. And our outfit, the 1st Cavalry Division, was the first one that was committed to the Korean War. Uh, you know, so, and 99 field artillery. Artillery is the reason I don't hear. So what was your, your primary job, your duty? What was your, your job, your duty? Well, when I went over there, we went on a big boat. We got off the boat, down this rope ladder, into the LST, and I got into this uh, Jeep. I was a battery commander's driver at that present time. And, uh, you know, you, you've seen on TV how they circled and then they hit for the beaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had you heard of Korea before you arrived there? About what? Did you hear, have you heard of Korea before you arrived there? Did you know? Did you know about Korea? No. And where it was? No. No idea. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm, let's see. So, when did you arrive in Korea? What was your your impression? June twenty seventh, nineteen fifty. June twenty seventh, nineteen fifty. What was your impression? I really didn't have one. <laughs> you know, when we got on, uh, we were on maneuvers at Mount Fuji, and. Uh, June, early June, and we're supposed to be up there for two weeks on maneuvers. Well, we was up there a week, and I says, pack up, we're going back to barracks, which was about 50, 60 miles away. We went back there and said, pack all your clothes in the footlocker, except your field equipment. So we packed everything in the footlocker, stuck it down to the gym, Got in the trucks, pulled our artillery pieces, headed to Yokohama. And they never said, uh, where we going? Nothing. And about a day before we landed, they issued ammunition. We were in Korea, there's a war going on. And that's when we found out where we was at. So, uh, went down the rope ladder, got in the Jeep. After it got us to the bank, we drove out, and it wasn't long, but we heard artillery pieces going off. So that's where did you, do you know where you arrived in Korea? Do what? Do you know wherever you arrived in Korea? Were you in Incheon? Where, where were the places that you were stationed? Station? Mm -hmm. Where were you stationed? Where was I stationed in Korea? Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Moved around, huh? We were not stationed any. We were we everywhere. We was here, 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 <laughs> here, 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 all over. How was the living conditions as far as clothing, food, um, sleeping arrangements? How was the conditions of living there? How are the... How were the living conditions? Living in conditions mm -hmm. for who? For you in Korea. Well, we had a kitchen, they call it. Mess hall, kitchen. But we didn't have it. I mean, it was somewhere else. We ate sea rations for the first six or seven months. December of 1950, the kitchen finally caught up with us. There was snow on the mountains where we was at, and uh, 
they did serve a hot meal. That was the first hot meal we've had in six, seven months. So they just didn't stay with us. I don't know where it was two days just warm them up. <laughs> they had to stay with us. <laughs> the sea rations is what we ate. Mm -hmm. The card over here, this is what was the most memorable thing you remember about Korea? In um, November of 1950, we thought the war was over because we had pushed the North Koreans clear back up to the Manchurian border. And that's when uh, 500,000 Chinese invaded and came back and pushed us back. Before they had, before the Chinese got in there, it was down to 30 below zero, and that's what I remember about Korea the most. The weather. <laughs> and I promised myself if I ever got home, I'd never get cold again. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, um, can we talk just whatever? Sure. You remember George Armstrong Custer in the Seventh Cavalry at uh, Little Bighorn? You heard? You never heard that? I don't know. Oh my! I, I mean, I've heard of Little Bighorn, but. Uh, well, anyway, George Custer got wiped out at the Little Bighorn by okay. the Indians. Well, at Ansan, Korea, the Chinese encircled us like this here. We lost. I'd say 50 to 80% of our equipment. And the uh, 8th Cavalry Regiment, which we were supporting, uh, that was their biggest loss right there. That was our, our little big horn at Onsun. In our battery, I think we lost about 25% of the guys. Yeah. Were you able to make a lot of relationships? And uh, so did you make relationships or friendships with other troops or the foreign soldiers? Well, we were supporting the 8th Cavalry Regiment in, uh, well, anyway. Uh, How are you, like, did you make any friends? Any friendships or oh, relationships yeah. with foreign uh, soldiers? We've had uh, a couple of reunions. Uh, we went to Las Vegas, went to Indiana a couple times, all the the guys in the 99th Field Artillery, mm -hmm. but uh, it's dwindled down to where there's not many of us left and they don't have reunions anymore uh, for some reason. It's not enough, nobody won't hold it, you know. Uh, I couldn't hold it because, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in any serious battles? Would I want? Were you in any serious battles? Honey, I was in five major campaigns, and there was only seven of them during the Korean War. Which ones were you involved with? Huh? Which ones were you involved with? The first five campaigns. You talk about, uh, did I see any blood and drag marks? <laughs> We was moved into position one day. Uh, this truck went over a landmine. It tore the front of the truck up, killed this guy in the front. So I was walking in front of my vehicle, leading it into position. Another line, a couple, three guys, battery commander and executive officer jumped out and ran over to where this truck was, and another land went off, killed all three of them. So after that, we just, everybody just froze and stood there until somebody says, well, we're going to have to take the bayonet and go around and find these landmarks before we move in any others. And uh, the Marines was across the road from us. They came over to help us clear the area before we could even set up our houses, you know. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen a lot of blood, uh, a lot of drag marks, a lot of blood. Were you wounded? No. Well, General McLaughlin says no soldier goes into battle without being wounded in one way or another. Uh, death 
and I'm 30% post-traumatic stress disorder. What was the impact of the war? Like, what did it have on your life after you returned home? Well, <laughs> when I first came home from Korea, I got discharged somewhere, and uh, I, I just wasn't satisfied after being there. And I went, I got bought a car, and I went to New Orleans just driving all over the place. And I came back and I re-enlisted with, within the 90 day period with the same rank. And uh, I went to Germany for three years. And when I came home, uh, it took me a while to get, uh, get situated again. So I did have a problem, but I don't want to mention it. Perfectly yeah. fine. Have you been back to Korea? Yeah. You have been back? Oh, you know, it's no seven. What did you think about the, the transition, how much of a difference and how much it had grown? It is unbelievable. I mean, 50 years is a long time, but they have accomplished miracle in 50 years. I mean, I don't know for sure, but uh, I would say that uh, at least 60% of the Koreans live in the big cities it, the high rises go straight up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what they're going to do in another 50 years. They're going to have to start birth control somewhere along the way. <laughs> um, do you think that it is possible to put a closure on the war entirely instead of it just being a ceasefire? Do I? Do you think it's possible to put a closure on the conflict in Korea, instead of it just being an armistice, maybe sign a peace treaty? Well, I think uh, President uh, Truman made a mistake when he fired MacArthur. If we would have went up to the yellow and uh, stopped them from all this shipping this stuff down here, mm -hmm. uh, we could have won the war without an armistice. I mean, we could have uh, it wouldn't still be under a war, you know, like it is right now. Yeah. But I think that Truman made a mistake when he fired MacArthur like that. He wanted to go up there and, and stop them by sending all this stuff down here. And then the first year, there was five campaigns against the North Koreans and Chinese. It, after the 1951, there was only two campaigns. So it ended in 1953. Do you have any messages or anything that you'd like to share with younger generations about the, Do you have any messages or something that you would like to share with younger generations to inform them on the Korean War? No, I don't. Or any set, I, okay. Um, is there any other stories or anything else that you would like to share? Is there anything else that you would like to share? Any well, I've, I don't know. I saw a lot of guys got killed. I mean, that's all I can say. Uh, although I was in the artillery, I wasn't uh, in the infantry. We did get, the bad thing about artillery at night, they pick out a place up here that's gonna drop some shells in, in case it, in case it was the enemy coming through there. Well, the groups up on the hill could see your fire, and they start sh shooting at us. So we did uh, have a lot of uh, artillery rounds coming in. Whenever you returned home from the war, did you speak of your experience? Did you talk about it with your family? Oh, my, my kids didn't even, uh, 
when they grew up, they never asked me one thing about the Korean War, not one thing. Just like I'd been down here in Louisiana somewhere doing something else. <laughs> Why do you think that is? I don't know. So, I mean, the Korean War is kind of known as the Forgotten War. Why do you think that is? What, what gave the Korean War the title, the Forgotten War? in your opinion? Well, uh, like this one guy said, he said, uh, uh, he said, I remember the Vietnam War, but the Korean War, I must have slept through it. It just wasn't... Televised? Yeah. yeah. Did you speak about the, your experience at all whenever you came no, home no, to anybody? No. You just kind of... Mm -hmm. No, as a matter of fact, I worked at... Uh, uh, General Motors for 30 some years, and there was four or five guys in there that was in a career. War, and I didn't know, know it until after I retired. <laughs> Did you return back from the war with, with hearing oh, loss? When I came back from the war, I was. I didn't start wearing hearing days until probably 10 years after I was back. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you fire 100,000 rounds of artillery rounds in a year's time, it's definitely going to affect your ears. Right. So, it just took a while for him to get, and I've been, I've bought probably four different pairs and paying $2,000 a piece for them in order to get the hearing, but I run into a guy over to where I used, uh, and he told me I need to go to VA that I can get compensated for this. You should. And that's when I finally went up there and, and, and had a, a hearing test and everything, and, and that's when they uh, put me down as a uh, service connected. My grandfather was a POW for 33 months in the Korean War. So, I mean, I don't know what you went through personally, but I know what he went through, and so I would just like to say thank you. I've seen did. a lot of people killed, I tell you. And I come close to getting captured, too. You were? Yeah. Where were you close to getting captured at? Mm -hmm. Where were you close? Where? Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. We're in northern Korea somewhere. Uh, I was with the FO team for about three months, and that's when you go up with the infantry mm -hmm. and call in artillery fire for the infantry. Well, we was up on this up on this hill like this here, there's a hill here. The gooks were over here, they were shooting over here, and the guys were in the box holes. And uh, I saw, I don't know how many guys, artillery men drop in those box holes. And... Um, it's a good thing you didn't get caught. <laughs> yeah, well. I still have a, a nightmare every once in a while about the thing. But it's getting better, but I don't have it near as often as I used to. Uh, the worst, I think the worst part was uh, the guys in the, get the, stepped on those landmines and stuff and get blown up right in front of us out there, you know. And me and my buddy was in a box hole. We'd been there two or three days and had put stuff over top of it. And we started getting our artillery rounds coming in. And one of them landed pretty close to us and uh, just about buried us in the dirt. <laughs> and we was uh, digging like this to get out, you know. And uh, I told him, his name was Charles Green, and I told him, I said, it looks like this is where we're going to die. And uh, I ran into him in, uh, I think it was 03, it is, I don't know how I remember. And I said, Charles, you remember what we said when you lived in that foxhole? He said, yeah. He said, it looked like this is where we're going to die. <laughs> yeah. But I was only 18 years old. I came back to Korea when I was 18 and eight months being 19.